What's the word, y'all? NBA trade deadline is always so fun. So far this year, we don't have a ton of big, big names potentially getting traded. Like, we've already seen Pascal Siakam, OG Ananobi, and then the next biggest names is like DeJounte Murray, which is completely different than last year where we saw Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant. But for about 12 hours yesterday, there was some buzz <laughs> that the Lakers might be trading LeBron James. Now, a, a big majority of us never believed it. And Rich Paul has come out today and say, hey, they bugging. We're not ask, asking to be traded. We're not being traded, whatever, whatever. But for about 12 hours, people were speculating a little bit. And, and again, I don't think he's going to get traded, but I think it's a cool thought experiment. So this is where it started off with David Pingalore. Um, he's saying he's hearing from NBA peeps that King James at the top of the Lakers list to be traded. 39 years old. Uh, Palenka is looking for the right team to dance with and is close to a suitor. And then LeBron James and Anthony Davis were out in their game against Boston. And they pulled out a, a pretty big win against the best team in basketball without LeBron James and Anthony Davis. And that's how you know NBA fans are bored. Not specifically this what David is saying. But because the Lakers went in and, and won that game against the Boston Celtics, I saw a Lakers fan. So, of course, don't represent the whole fan base. Like, see? Everybody the roster is just being used wrong. Players 3 through 10, I think this was uh, my boy Low Tweet. Player 3 through 15 are a lot better than y'all think. Be they just being used wrong because of Bron and AD or whatever. Now, we're talking about a one game sample size here, so maybe take it with a grain of salt. But in this game versus the, the Boston Celtics, obviously, it shot 51% from three, which is crazy for the LA Lakers. But I want to think about this, this shot frequency where in this game last night, 35% of their shots came from the three point line, and then traditionally it's about 32%. Now, obviously, we're talking about a one game sample size versus 40 plus games of the other but I, I think it's kind of interesting to kind of look at these factors so starting off with the frequency of the three-point shot now uh, normally the Lakers again are just really really bad when it comes to getting their three-point attempts up 32 percent which is 28th in basketball last night again one game sample size versus the Boston Celtics up to 35 percent that is the 45 percent I would see oh, not great but it's higher than what they're used to by three percent but they also shot it at a 51% clip. So part of them winning this game is just like, oh my God, we shot 51% from three. But I, their shot diet completely flipped on his head because with AD and LeBron this season, they're the number two team when it comes to shots at the rim. I mean, we're talking about a team that's going to pound it, pound it, pound it, um, get to the free throw line and so on and so forth. When this game, they did not get to the rim at all. And it was a lot of mid-range jump shots and three-point shots. So again, take that. With, with a grain of salt because we're talking about a one game sample size and of course your shot diet is going to change where you're missing your top two players but we did see people like Austin Reeves V8 before he went down with his injury and just other people play differently there is a pace to this game um, but anyway let's get back to the LeBron James potential trade stuff now that tweet from David Pingalore is coming off the backs of LeBron James tweeting an hourglass emoji the night before. Um, and I'd be like, oh, what does that mean? Because they had just lost a game in Atlanta where things look really, really bad. Um, so is this saying that there's a matter of time before somebody's getting traded? Is this a matter of time before what? Is Darvin Ham back on the hot seat? Uh, we later found out that that was probably because he was doing a deal with DraftKings. <laughs> At least that's what we think. I don't know. Now, we would normally take a report like this with a grain of salt. Um, but D David Pingalore has been right on a couple things, basically telling the world that LeBron James was about to go to L.A. When nobody else uh, really had the scoop, he said that Kawhi Leonard was going to go to the go to the Clippers. And then he also had some speculation that LeBron James is headed back to the Cavs. Um, so we're like, hold on. Dude, bro, really got sources? Now, I don't know all of the misses that he might have had in his career because no, nobody did the research on misses, but he's got a couple makes. It's like, oh, my God, maybe LeBron is potentially getting traded. Again, we know now that he's not, but that made me think about if LeBron was to be traded, who are the people that we think would be interested? And what does that trade look like? What is the value of a 39-year-old player who is still really, really good, but also a guy that told the world that he's going to try to team up with his son when that time comes at the end of the season? We had to go to the basement setup. There are things going on upstairs regardless. We, the, the video must go on. Uh, there are a couple different factors you got to think about when building a hypothetical fictional LeBron James trade. Again, just as a thought experiment. The first one is he's going to want to go to a contender. You're not LeBron James leaving LA to go to another team that's not gonna be in the playoffs or not gonna be competing for championship rings so it has to be a team that fits that and also with that being said it has to be a team that doesn't have to gut their roster in order to bring LeBron James in because what's the point of being a contender right now if I got to trade my third fourth the fifth best player to get the LeBron James on the roster it doesn't really make sense but again this goes back to the conversation of what is the value of a 39 year old LeBron James coming into the organization objectively he's still one of the best players in basketball 
But does that mean that we want to give up four first round picks to get him on the last year of his deal? It's not going to be the same value that we would have got if in 2020 or in 2016 or in 2005. Like the man's been around for a very long time. So this is probably the lowest trade value he's ever had. But that doesn't mean it's no trade value. You know what I'm saying? A player like LeBron James's caliber does not get traded very often. I know we saw Kevin Durant get traded last year, but that is an anomaly. Like at the deadline, these caliber players, top 10 players currently in basketball, do not get moved off. So I went to fan sport and I was like, you know what? Let me try to build a couple trades, a couple teams that I think could, could maybe put it back together. And LeBron James right now is trending. The number one on fan sports means that people have come to fan sports website and said, I'm building a LeBron James trade more than DeJounte Murray, D'Angelo Russell, Evan Fournier. Dang, Zach Levine and them didn't fail down because the Bulls might not trade anybody. <laughs> um, but now before I even build my trades, I'm curious to what the community is saying. The, the people, the, all of the people that's putting together, they LeBron James trades. What does those look like? See, somebody is just out here having fun. Fantasy trading. Oh, at least you're being honest. LeBron James to Atlanta. Cut it out. Give me the ones from today. The uh, most upvoted one now is only three upvotes now. It's not like he's been up, this been upvoted like crazy. LeBron James, Christian Wood, and the least favorable of a 2026 for Chris Paul Wiggins, and the most favorable of a 2026. All right. That's going a little far. Now, the Warriors were a team. I was like, undoubtedly, if this thing was happening, there will be a team that LeBron is going to think about and that the Warriors are going to think about too. We're talking about two of the top, I don't know how many players in NBA history. It depends on what you have, Steph. Um, Teaming up together on the second half of their careers, it could be kind of legendary, but I could see a lot of purists, a lot of traditionalists hating the idea because y'all competed so well for the last decade and now you're trying to team up. It's kind of, it's kind of weird. But this trade that this person put together is awful. Again, I don't think LeBron James got the value of 2016, but this, this, cut it out. 100% was built by a Warriors fan. Just saying like, can we get LeBron James in for nothing? Let me see if I can do something, something. So Chris Paul has to be in the deal, right? Just to make the money match. You, if you, if I am the Lakers, right? And I'm like, okay, we're going to trade LeBron James. There's a couple different ways we could go. We could say, hey, we still want to build around Anthony at 30 years old. So we kind of want players and future assets because we could turn those future assets to real players, right? So Chris Paul's contract has to come in. I'm looking at the Warriors draft capital and they got a, they got a lot of their own first round picks. I'm going to need a few of those. I want 2025. 20, I want, uh, I want like a 27. Uh, let's just say that that's to start off with. And the person that built that trade was like, I will not trade Jonathan Kaminga. I will not trade Brandon Przybyszki. You trade Jackson Davis. I need a combination of some of these younger dudes. I have. I need them. I need them. I'm not paying. I don't want to pay Wiggins. I don't. I don't want to break up Seth Curry, Clay Thompson, Draymond. Draymond and LeBron are homies now, you know? So we don't want any of those pieces, but you got to fill out the roster with some of the younger dudes. And if I'm the Lakers, I'm asking for, for, for Kaminga, and maybe the Warriors say no, because Kaminga has been that good, that I'm not trading Jonathan Kaminga for LeBron James. That, that might be something they would say. But even with that, we need a little bit more money, and that's where it gets tough. So maybe you do throw in Wiggins, but if I'm the Lakers, I need an extra first-round pick to take on that Wiggins contract. I'm being honest with you. I don't love this, but financially, this does not work. All right. It still does not work. Oh, because of the contracts are way too big. Hold on, hold on. Here, take our injured Gabe Vincent. This is not a good trade package either, but this, this is probably the start of it. This is probably the start of it. Ah, uh, the next team I thought about was the Knicks. 100% fits every piece of criteria that I mentioned earlier. The Knicks have been one of the two hottest teams in all of basketball since the OG Ananobi trade. They're even winning a bunch of games now that Julius Randle is out. It doesn't even really make sense too much, but they have the potential assets to make this happen. Now, in this hypothetical trade, it is gonna have to get rid of Julius Randle in this one. But if you're getting back LeBron James, who's like a a super ver superhero version of Julius Randle, you probably okay with. I mean, EQ Grimes back, he's already disgruntled anyway. I mean, you, for the Knicks are trying to get rid of him in real life, so that's not that big of a deal. And just to make the money match, we need one of Josh Hart or Dante DiVincenzo. Knicks fans, y'all can argue amongst yourselves or which one would you rather give up? Oh no, Evan Fournier's money makes it makes it work. This trade works right here. Okay, money-wise, it, it works. So now it's like, hey, Knicks, we know you got a Wizards pick. We know you got a Pistons pick. Now, again, these are protected very heavily, so they may not even convey. You got Dallas's pick this year. You got Milwaukee's next year. Like, you have so... Look at all of the picks that the Knicks have. Rob Palenka's like, I'm gonna need uh, six of them. Because cause Julius Randle's an all-NBA caliber player, but he, him playing alongside Anthony Davis is not something we really interested in. We might want to flip him to a third team anyway. So give me some picks. I don't know how many. You tell me. What about these guys? Now, 
you can argue whether or not this will be an upgrade for Braun, right? Um, because this is a team that also does not shoot many threes. And now in this hypothetical trade, Tyler Hero is going out. Now some of the three-point shot making you have is just gone in order to bring Braun in. So maybe that's not the smartest thing, but we know Eric Spolstra and Braun have won a few championships together. Turn them back to the land. Already conversations about the combination of Jared Allen and Evan Mobley. What if we send one of them to LA? The one I saw a lot was this one. I don't think the Thunder are in a position where they're like, let's add 39-year-old LeBron James, you know? But they could make it happen so easy because look at this. Look at this. Look how many strolls I have to do to get down there. Look at all of this. Look at all of that. So they could make it happen with draft capital by itself. All And like the Mavericks just don't have enough to make it happen. Uh, look at their draft uh, board is uh, not a lot. So there are not a ton of ton of teams that would be able to put together the fictional trade to get LeBron James. But there are some like with the, the the Lakers don't just want a few of these first round picks and a bunch of seconds, do they? Like the 76, obviously, we don't know what's going on with Joel Embiid's knee. So maybe that's just a non-starter for a lot of people. But they're going to they have the money to match this 47 million. Do they have the the draft picks? Now, some of these draft picks are just not good. Like OKC, Houston, L.A., the worst stuff. That's not a very good first round pick, but it is a first round pick. It's just fun. How often do you get a rumor that one of the best ever is about to be traded? Whether the rumor was true or not, it got to make you think. And I hope it made you think and you had some fun too. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see y'all.